Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pageless Library. We are a little podcast dedicated to reviewing audiobooks. I am Ryan Knight. And I am Bo Knight. And today, we are taking a look at Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, written by J.K. Rowling and narrated by Jim Dale. Yes, we are. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. (laughs) So before we get started... If anybody has anything at all to say to us, please email us, kotpl.pod at gmail.com. That is the easiest way to get a hold of us. Uh, Yeah. And I think this goes without saying, but obviously we always listen to our books from Audible. This came from Audible. Unfortunately, we didn't have access to the tapes that we used to listen to this book on. All right. So we had to go through Audible. And yeah, please don't pirate this. I... I don't know. I don't approve of such actions. Let's just say that. Well, and we we haven't really said this in a while, so we should probably reiterate it. But we did listen to this, like we said, on Audible. So if you just I'm sure there's ways to like go on YouTube and just listen to somebody read this book. But just know we are talking about the Audible version. So if you listen to it somewhere else, obviously, you know, your experience is probably going to be different. Wait a minute. Can, can somebody just like if I have a book, can I just like make videos of me reading it out loud? People do it all the illegal? time. I don't know. People do it all the time. So I never thought about that. I yeah, I, it's probably not, you know, 100 percent legal. Um, I guess unless you're not making money off of it. I don't know why it would be a problem. Yeah, but I'm like offering basically the content that's in the book for free for someone else. Right. Yeah. Sorry, you, I never really thought about that. Sorry, this is totally off track. I don't know. If anybody knows the answer to that, please email yeah. us and let us know. Yeah, let me know because I'm really curious. Yeah, because there are there are a bunch of books. Like if you – any of these, if you search the audiobook on YouTube, usually it's just like a blank screen and somebody reading the book in the background. Yeah. So, yeah, your mileage will definitely vary with that. Yeah, for sure. Good luck. So with that, let's get into this one. So the version that we are listening to, <clears throat> the book actually came out. Let me double check this. I just was looking at it, but the actual book came out in like 1997. That's what I'm seeing too. And I also notice that it shows a 1999 by listening library. Um publication which i believe the original books on tape we listened to those were the ones we listened to mm-hmm. was that original publishing in 1999 the version we are looking at today though i believe came out in like 2013 so it was probably yeah. like re- remastered or something in 2013 yeah i don't think it like re-recorded the audio or anything like that i think they just like touched it up but i put that in quotes sure uh, actually, it looks like 2015, but yeah, either way, it's not it's not a super old version if you get these on Audible. Um, this is the first book in the Harry Potter series, in case somebody's like, what is Harry Potter? Why do these guys act like I know what they're talking about? Because um, you probably do. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but this is, the, this is the first book in the series, in case anybody is curious. Wow. So. Um, uh, so we'll talk about JK Rowling for a bit. Yeah, so <clears throat> this primarily is what JK Rowling is known for is the I'm gonna go ahead and say the initial Harry Potter series, I think is what she is known for. She has a lot of other stuff under her belt. However, I believe this is what she's known for. Yeah, it is kind of her crowning achievement. Um, unless she, you know, Nowadays, people might be like, nah, I know who that is. She tweeted about something weird the other day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hermione was actually black. Yeah, so, <laughs> so just so everybody's clear, what we talk about today, like about this book, is most likely leaving out any of J.K. Rowling's personal issues she may or may not have on the internet. 
you know, all that stuff's going to be put aside for this review. Mostly because I don't know anything about it. Exactly. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't do anything on Twitter and stuff like that, but I've seen other people talking about it. And I know there's been some controversy about things she has said sort of uh, like she has kind of uh, retconned, you know, from her own stories. So. I know it's so stupid. Okay. never mind. I don't want to well, talk about it. Yeah. Um, so the genre of this book is obviously, this is a pretty high fantasy type of novel. Oh, dude, you're, you're skipping my boy, Jim Dale. Oh my gosh, you're right. I am so sorry. I did. I skipped down in the notes. <laughs> my bad. Please, please. Ooh, so okay. You, you want to talk about him? Or you want me to talk about him? No, I want you to talk about him. Oh man, I don't know if this is just nostalgia goggles or what, but he is great. I could mm -hmm. listen to this man read the phone book. I... <laughs> That's the best way to put it ever. It's true. Um, I do think, and that that could be a lot of nostalgic feelings from me as well. Um, but I still think that Jim Dale holds a for sure spot in my top five, if not my top one narrator that I've ever listened to. <laughs> my top one? Who says that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just oh. saying, I think he's that good. I really do. His, his range that he has? is insane to me yes and every it's, character is unique they all are and it's made that much better that simply by the voice he's doing you know who's talking yeah. i mean and he's one guy this is not a cast of people he's oh. by himself so the fact that he can do hagrid and dumbledore is insane and right. to me like the voices he uses are like the voices those characters have in my head sure yeah it really does he really paints a picture with the way yeah. that he voices these characters, for sure. Okay, now you can talk about the genre. Yes. So, this... It has it categorized under children's audiobooks and literature and fiction, but in reality, this is kind of a high fantasy style of novel. You know, it's got... Obviously, it has some magic, you know? It's got some wizards in it. Things like that. So... If this is if that kind of stuff interests you, you know, maybe this book would interest you. Yeah, probably. So this book clocks in right at eight hours and eighteen minutes. Uh, I believe it is the shortest of the entire series. That's what I was gonna say. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure it is too. It had the least tapes. Yes, it actually had the. I think it was one of the ones that had. Um, it had the tapes, and then it had like a spacer thing to make up the rest yeah. of the box. Mm -hmm. It did. Yeah, and I think one of the only ones that doesn't have like that spacer thing is like the Goblet of Fire doesn't have that. Uh, the Order of the Phoenix had like the even bigger box. It came in yeah, an it, extended it, it, box. It's like an extra long boy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So you could get this for free. If you were to sign up for Audible with your 30-day trial, this could be your first free book if you wanted. Or you could purchase it for $29.99. Ooh, it's still that much? It is still that much. <clears throat> and that doesn't really surprise me, though. No, I mean, they're going to milk that cash cow that is Harry Potter until it dies. Exactly. So, <clears throat> um... Okay, so a couple big questions here. Is this easy to follow? Yes, but I've listened to it like a million times. I agree. And that could be very biased on my part as well. That yes. this is this is incredibly easy to follow in my opinion. <clears throat> oh, yeah, but I mean I, we used to listen to these books together. Right. <laughs> this I mean I I used to listen to this to fall asleep a lot of nights. Yes. <laughs> Again, props to my boy Jim Dale because yeah. he can, and it's not a bad thing that he can lull me to sleep. So, but I think even as like an outsider who's maybe never heard of Harry Potter before, coming in, the story's not necessarily that complicated, and if you miss something, they're probably going to repeat it. So it's not a right. It's, it is it is a children's book in structure and complexity, so it's it's not super super complicated. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's uh, 
yeah, even if I hadn't listened to it a ton of times, you know, this is one of those books I do remember the first time through listening to it, I pretty much understood, you know, there wasn't a lot of questions hanging out in my head. So no. it is a very straightforward story, though. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. So no, I don't think so. Um, again, this kind of goes without saying what we just kind of stated. This one's also easy listening. You know, this Jim yeah. Dale is easy on the ears. Yeah, so easy. <laughs> on the ears. <laughs> so if it wasn't clear or not yet, what's your recommendation on this one, Bo? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's hard to like, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of because like I have so much history with this whole series. I hated it. I, I hated it. Just... Yeah, I know. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> Never skip it, all the books. I had to it's... listen to it 20 times just to make sure. Yeah, e exactly. <laughs> like, of course, go listen to this. I love it. You're probably going to love it, too. This exactly. is like this is one of the main reasons I even like audiobooks is because of the Harry Potter series. Not just this book, but all of them. But exactly. this book is also great. Even coming back to it as an adult and probably not listening to it for at least 10 years, I feel like it still holds up. It's still a lot of fun. It's still... It still goes down so smooth, and it's 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 relatively short, and it's like a, it's a pretty good feel good story. Like I, I really feel like this is kind of for everyone. Sure, I I wholeheartedly agree with all of that. I mean, this one, <clears throat> if someone were going to like, if they were thinking about like dipping their toes into Audible and they weren't quite sure what they wanted for a first book, this would be a great book for anyone to pick up as like your first free book. Um, and if this is one of the first audiobooks you've ever listened to uh it's it's gonna be it's gonna set the bar really high let's put it that way yeah as far as audiobooks go yeah um and again a lot of that might come from nostalgia but like you said i don't think i've listened to this book in at least 10 years yeah you know so coming back to it now i mean yeah it was it was great just as great as it was when i was little and i was listening to it on tapes you know yeah yeah, when you were on the top bunk and you would make me flip the tapes when I was on the bottom bunk. <laughs> ah, yes. Classic. These are some of the tapes too, you know, we used to go to work and you'd have to bring your freaking Walkman with you and leave all the tapes in the car, but you could only bring like two tapes in your pockets all day. Yeah. So then you'd have to try to find time to go back to your rig to get a new tape and bring with you. <laughs> yeah, the struggle was real. The struggle was real. I mean, some people will never know cuz we obviously didn't have audible at that point so no it makes it so much easier yeah <laughs> yeah so with that we're gonna go ahead and we'll pass the spoiler wall <clears throat> so for anybody who doesn't know what that means we're gonna go ahead and basically just talk about the whole story so uh, if you if you think this sounds interesting sounds like something you might want to listen to please by all means go and pick it up and listen to it then please come back here and listen to what we have to say about it and I'd be really astonished if somebody was like, what the hell is Harry Potter? I've never heard anything about it. Right. It would be it'd be pretty hard to find somebody who had never heard of this series before. And if you are one of those people, please go listen to this book and let us know what you think. Yeah. Because don't watch the movie. Exactly. Yeah. Don't do not like don't ruin this for yourself. You got to get the book first and you yeah. got to listen to the book first and then watch the movie and hate it. Well. We might get into that one of these days. I think we should, once we finish talking about this stuff, I do think it would be worth talking about this movie series maybe as a I know, whole. but I don't, I don't want to turn into like a meme of just being like, was the movie good compared to the book? No. Well, I think we'd have a little bit I more insight than that. So, Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. It's just I feel like people don't like that. And they're like, I, well, I like the movie, and it's like, well, book's better, idiot. Yeah. No, and I get it, but maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But so that with that, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's get into the story. What do you think? Well, what do you mean? What do I think? Of course, let's get into the story. What do you think? Go ahead. Let's. I'll let you get started on this one. Okay, so the story starts up. We are just like watching this nice little street in England, and we kind of get a picture, like a like a snapshot of this family called the Dursleys, and we like follow the father. Oh God, what's his name? Vernon. Vernon. Yeah. Vernon Dursley, and he's like he's like this huge fat guy, and he's just like going about his business, and he keeps seeing like weird stuff, like he sees people in robes all day, and and like this one guy comes up to like runs into him on accident, and he's like, oh, it's such a it's such a momentous day even for your kind, and he's like dressed really weird, and the Dursleys are really concerned about like being as normal as possible, like they don't really want to stand out, and they just want to be like a normal, super normal family, 
And I guess we get a little bit of a mention about um, Petunia's sister. Her name is Petunia, right? Yes. We get a little mention of her sister and how she's like, she's kind of a nutter and she married a nutter and she's just like a weirdo. But they they like hear mention that the Potters had been hurt, but he like th- he like thinks he, then then Harry got hurt and he's like oh maybe that's not his name maybe it is his name and he like goes home and he brings it up to his wife and she gets all pissed off and then we cut to like the nighttime right yeah yep and then we get Dumbledore who is oh, man it's it's hard to even ex- like I, I guess at the beginning you really don't know a lot about him he like shows up and he has this little light put out or thing and he clicks all the street lights off and then this cat that had been watching the Dursleys all day turns out to be Professor McGonagall, and she talks to Dumbledore for a while. And we figure out that Lord Voldemort had tried to kill Harry Potter, but he couldn't, and somehow Harry survived, but both of his parents died. Right. And so what they're what they're gonna do is they're gonna give Harry to the Dursleys to raise him until he's old enough to go to to school. And while they're talking about this, uh, a giant flying motorcycle shows up, which how does nobody notice any of this stuff? <laughs> I find it kind of hard to believe. I don't know. Um, it's worth mentioning here, too, that like, because like, I've heard uh, that people think J.K. Rowling was making a lot of this story up as she went. But I don't the, know about that. Well, that's why I was going to say, even this part, uh, Hagrid says he borrowed the motorcycle from Sirius, from Sirius Black. Black. Yeah. Yeah. So clearly, she already had ideas for these other characters. In you know, they're already in the universe, which we'll I think is impressive. We'll get to something slightly later too, and I don't. That doesn't make any sense because there are like little details even in this first book that come up way later. Sure. And I mean, I'm no writer, so I guess it is. It's it's probably easy enough to name drop and then write that person into the story later. But I just thought that was an interesting detail, you know. Yeah, I, I guess you could go backwards, right? Like, oh well, this guy did this, right? But so yeah, they uh, he, uh, Dumbledore decides that Harry needs to stay with his aunt and uncle because they are the only family he basically has left. So that's why he's leaving them leaving Harry with them, um, even though Professor McGonagall is like, these are the worst kind of people you could possibly leave him with. Yeah, and honestly, I feel like it's just a huge oversight from Dumbledore's. Well, no, I guess it was on purpose, wasn't it? Never mind. Yeah, it kind of, well, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, and then, so on the motorcycle, like we mentioned, was Hagrid, which we're not going to really learn a whole lot about Hagrid until a little bit later. Um, Hagrid is such a G, though. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, I f- like I kind of forgot how wholesome he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the one of the better characters I think in the entire like series. Yeah, and I feel like he doesn't get enough spotlight in the first book anyway. Right. Um. So we should mention too that the Dursleys also have a child who was right oh, around Dudley. <laughs> right. So Dudley is pretty much right around the exact same age as Harry is in the beginning of this. Um. So then we basically have a big old long time skip forward because we jump all the way ahead to Dudley's birthday, right? Dudley's mm-hmm. like thirteenth birthday, is that right? Or eleven? Turning eleven. It's, it's eleven. That's right. Yeah. Um, and we basically get a snapshot here of kind of how poorly Harry is treated from the beginning. Uh sleeps in a freaking cupboard under the stairs, little tiny, you know, closet looking thing is as much room as they would give him. Uh, uh, Petunia wakes him up and wants him to immediately take over cooking. The yeah. Food. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's his responsibility to cook the bacon and eggs for breakfast. Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, And we also, there's a lot of stuff said in this first part without like, like you get a very good idea of all these characters right away because also we get a really quick idea that Dudley is a spoiled, rotten piece of trash. Yeah. Like just a horrendous child because he's he's all concerned with how many presents he has. Yeah, he's counting them and he's like, it's yeah. two less than last year. 
Yeah, he's more. He's not really concerned with what he's gotten. He's concerned with how many presents he has. That's yeah. it. So, and then think... there's like a little scene where, because normally they would like pawn Harry off on this lady, so Dudley can hang out with his friend all day and basically do whatever he wants. But she's she broke her leg, to tripping on one of her cats. So she can't take Harry, and they like go through this whole scene. Like, well, maybe we could do this. Well, we're never, we're never gonna leave him here alone. So they like basically decide that they have to take Harry with them. And right. Dudley is super upset. Yeah, and they they ponder about leaving Harry in the car while they go to the zoo. Yeah. And he's like, the car is new. We'll never <laughs> yeah, they're concerned because the car is new, not because it would be terrible to leave a kid in the car yeah, at the zoo. <laughs> freaking, it's terrible. So then we end up, they, uh, so they have to take Harry to the zoo with them. That's where they're going for Dudley's birthday. And uh, Dudley's best friend, Piers Polkis, comes with How them. the heck do you remember him? I just, because it's such a weird name. <laughs> I feel like they mention it twice. That's it. No, 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 that is, that's literally all they mention it. But yeah, I only remember it because it's such a unique name. <laughs> um. And we also get a couple little hints here, too, about how much of a bully Dudley is, because uh, he talks about how Piers is the one who holds kids' arms behind their back while Dudley punches yeah. them. So, like I said, just kind of human filth at this point. <laughs> human filth. <laughs> <clears throat> so they end up going to the zoo, and we kind of get some stuff that goes on during the day. They... This is where, too, they buy ice cream and they try to not buy Harry anything. But yeah, but the lady's <laughs> like, what do you want? And so they had to buy him something, which yeah. which is so gross to me. It's like, oh, my God. It's so bad. Yeah, and he, he, they get him, like, the smallest little ice cream cone they could, and Harry yeah. loved it. He thought it was the best thing ever. Yeah, it just shows you how abused he is. Exactly. <clears throat> um, And we eventually end up at a point where they're talking about, uh, like, they're at the reptile house, right? Mm -hmm. and they're looking at a big old snake right but it's Brazilian not doing... python it's something like that yeah and but the snake's not doing anything so Dudley's... make it move yeah <laughs> this is boring yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so the snake won't do anything so Dudley because he's so spoiled he gets bored and he walks off <clears throat> and so Harry just decides to stay there because the rest of them finally leave him alone and he can kind of hang out with his own thoughts um and this is when the snake talks to him right well he talks to the snake i don't think that's the snake right. says anything but the snake can hear him and yeah, understand it winks him. at him and that's it nods right. his head and then that's he's like right. he's like oh where where are you from and it points to the board and he's like oh you're from yep. brazil have you ever been and then it points to the board again and it's like born in captivity yeah and he's kind of like that's me you know i'm the same way yeah he really relates to the snake right but then and, Dudley, or no, P Pierce, his friend is like, look, look what Harry's doing. The snake's moving. And so Dudley comes up and like pushes his face up against the glass. And this really, really makes Harry super, super well, mad. Because Harry, because Dudley punches Harry in the ribs. Oh, you're right. Him. He does punch him. That's right. I forgot <laughs> about the physical violence. Right. Which then makes Harry mad. When So Harry falls down and he gets pissed off. And next thing he knows, the glass on the enclosure is gone. Yeah. And Dudley's in there with the snake. And the freaking snake ends up <laughs> coming out and like, you know, it scares everybody obviously in the reptile house and it freaking takes off. But Harry can hear it as it leaves saying, Brazil, here I come. Yeah. So that right there kind of like, if this would be your first time ever listening to this, you'd be like, uh, what? Like, what is going on? <laughs> Right, and I think we skipped over to there are a couple moments of Harry, like weird, this weird stuff that Harry had did, like he accidentally turned his teacher's wig blue, and right. one day he got a haircut, like a super shitty, ugly haircut, basically like shaved all the way down, except for his, which bangs. you didn't even mention that yeah. he has a scar on his forehead that looks like a lightning bolt. Oh shit! I know it's gonna be hard for me to remember to mention I, that's, everything. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's why I'm trying to be super, super thorough. Right. But you're but yeah, right. Yeah, he 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 gets a really bad haircut, except for his bangs, so it covers his scar. And then he wakes up the next day, and his hair is exactly the same. Right. He also has gotten in trouble because like Dudley and his gang were chasing Harry, and he ended up on top of the school roof. Yeah. Like he had no so idea how he got up there. That's right. You're you're absolutely right. There's been a lot of hints that something is obviously not normal. So. Right. 
Um, and if we gloss over these subtle details, it's probably because this is just, you know, the story is so familiar to us. So we do apologize for that. Right, right. Yeah, it does make it kind of hard. Um, so, yeah, they end up obviously leaving. And this, though, while they're in the car, Harry's talking about how wild, you know, Dudley and Piers's uh, stories are getting, you know, to the point where Piers says that the, the snake wrapped him up like was choking him even though obviously none of that stuff happened no but Piers mentions that harry was talking to the snake so Piers noticed his little conversation there mm-hmm. okay do the dursleys punish him i don't remember uh yeah i think they freaking lock him in his cupboard right yeah for for, two weeks. for like yeah for like two weeks which is just oh my god <laughs> yeah it's crazy um and then we jump to him getting the letter, right? Yeah, he gets something in the mail. Yeah. I'll let you talk about it. Hang on, I gotta talk to my kids. Go for it. Oh, that's okay. So he the Vernon makes him get the mail one day because Dudley doesn't want to do it. And Harry notices that he has a package, and so he's trying to be like kind of secretive. But but it, it, the package even says like whatever private drive under the stairs, so it like knows exactly where he lives, and he tries to open it, but Vernon takes it from him, opens it, reads it, looks horrified, and it's like no, you can't, you can't have this, like what, like you, yeah, this, this isn't for you, and they, they like he like burns it, I think, and he throws it immediately in the fire, and they just kind of move on. And then they 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 tell Harry that he's gonna move into Dudley's old his not his old room his like his, his second bedroom yeah I was trying to think of what to call it yeah, yeah. His second bedroom yeah so he Harry gets to move into a different part of the house and I guess they're just doing that because they don't want the mail to get to him anymore <laughs> well because the letter is specifically addressed to Mr yeah, H I Potter that. yeah under the st- under the stairs or whatever covered under the stairs which is great detail <laughs> yeah and then because when he sees the next one right it's it's labeled like mr h potter the smallest bedroom mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah which i do i love that and basically the the letters keep coming and it just keeps escalating and escalating and escalating and eventually vernon just takes them on a vacation because they keep getting so many letters there's like nothing you can do about it anymore and so they go on vacation and they like go to this super remote cabin where they have to like row a little boat out and it and it's hair it's gonna be the next day is Harry's birthday. Right. And when they're hanging out in the cabin, Harry is watching his watch and he's waiting until midnight to tell himself happy birthday. And like at the strike of midnight, right, there's a huge knock on the door. Yeah. Huge booming sound. Yeah. Here, I'll let you talk about this part. And the door ends up falling in because Hagrid is there, and uh, we forgot to mention that Hagrid is massive. He's huge. He's a, he's like a giant man. Yeah, it says something like he's like two or three times as tall. It must be two times as tall, but five times like as broad as, as a normal broad, human. Yeah, he's huge. Yeah, he's a massive. So he's man. probably like nine feet tall, if not taller. Right. So. Which Harry doesn't know this is Hagrid, but we as the right. listener know who this yeah. is because of how he's described. This giant man with a giant bushy beard and all the like, we know who this is. <clears throat> um, and Hagrid basically comes in, and this is kind of Harry's real first introduction to anything magical because Harry has been, has grown up having all this stuff suppressed from him. Mm-hmm. So Hagrid mentions the question like, didn't you wonder where your mom and dad learned all of it? And he mm-hmm. has no idea what Hagrid's talking about. And Hagrid gives him the letter and allows Harry to read it. And this time it's like Mr. H. Potter, the cabin on the rock, the floor. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, and it I basically you get a scene too of Vernon pulls a gun on Hagrid and Hagrid just bends it in half. Yeah, he he grabs it and like turns it into a freaking pretzel, which yeah. is great. <laughs> oh. He also too, when he comes in, the place is like cold and stuff, and Hagrid goes over in front of the fire, and then when he comes away, the fire is going. Like, yeah, he's only standing over there for a few seconds, but then the fire is like roaring in the hearth. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> so once Harry reads his letter, it says that he's been accepted to the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. 
and then it has a list of all the things he's going to need when he goes there at the start of turn. So Hagrid kind of drops a little bit of knowledge on him that Harry's parents were a great witch and wizard and that, you know, that he is part of that world too. And he asks Harry, you know, if he's ever done anything that he can't explain. And that's where, you know, Harry remembers all those kind of things we were talking about before the haircut that his hair would grow back immediately and those kind of things. So this is also Hagrid has brought Harry a cake because it's his birthday. And <laughs> he, uh, he ends up freaking, that's right. Vernon starts insulting, right? He insults Albus Dumbledore. Yeah, and so and that really makes Hagrid angry. Yeah, and so Hagrid pulls out his pink umbrella and he points it at Dudley. <laughs> Dudley grows a pig's tail. Yeah. Which is freaking great. Because Hagrid's like meant to turn him into a whole pig, but apparently yeah. <laughs> apparently this it was too similar already. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't yeah. much left to do <laughs> it's pretty true so basically now hagrid is in charge of taking harry and getting him ready to go to school so harry is finally leaving the dursleys which you know especially from us as a listener we're like oh thank god he's yeah he's honestly free. the first part of the book is kind of hard to listen to because it's just so abusive it's yeah so, oh, it makes me sick right it is it's so freaking knock down drag out of poor freaking yeah. harry um and then they kind of mention how Hagrid is not supposed to do magic but he's he's able to do a little bit uh you know in order to come get Harry he's been given some kind of special uh special you know whatever privileges to do magic um and that's when they get in the boat right and he's like it'd be a lot faster if i use a little bit of magic and he freaking you know taps the boat and the oars just start yeah they do like themselves across to the shore which is great mm -hmm. and then he takes harry to diagon alley right yep i feel like that's what it's called which there's kind of like a long sequence of getting there but we'll spare you the details and so they have to go there and the first thing they do is they have to get harry some money because he doesn't have any money so they have to go to Green Guts, which Hagrid also has like Dumbledore business to go there. And Green Guts is a, a wizarding bank run by goblins, which I don't really even know like anything about goblins. They're super creepy in the movies. Yeah, and there's some I mean, that's they're portrayed in the movie, the first one pretty well, as far as like the way this uh, book describes them. You know, they describe them as like small creepy sharp tooth like ugly little creatures so mm -hmm. and so they they take like a a roller coaster ride but it's it's just like a mine cart kind of thing like whipping through all these huge massive tunnels to get to harry's vault right and when they get there harry's vault is like full of money like his parents were rich and they left him with a lot of money mm -hmm. which I mean, I'm not going to lie to this day. I still don't fully understand, but yeah. Anyways. Well, I think because his parents were like really accomplished. Uh, God, what are they called? The Whatever the the people that hunt the dark wizards are oh, called. Oh, the Auras? Aura? Yeah. Auror? However they say it. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think that's why. Right. I think, uh, no, I think you're right. And while they're also there, they... Hagrid gets this little tiny package of something to bring with him back to Hogwarts. Yeah, and they they make it a big detail about like the vault that it's in. That like if anybody else but a Green God Scoblin tried it, they would be sucked inside. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "How often do you check for people?" And he's like, "Once every ten years or something like that." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so don't try to break in Green Guts. It's the safest place in the world besides Hogwarts. Right, exactly. And then we go and we get, he's getting fitted for his robes and we get to meet yep. Draco Malfoy. That's right, yeah. And like immediately he's like asking Harry, he's like, he's like, so what wizarding family are you from? And he's like, I don't know, my, don't know, I don't know my parents. And he's like, well, as long as you're not a mudblood, you're probably all right in my book. Right, which 
is like in this world harry doesn't know because he has no idea what this means but we know this is like a pretty racy term to be saying yeah it is and so a mudblood is somebody who has wizarding powers who was born from non-wizarding parents right or even if they had can do magic right or if they had like one wizard parent and one non-wizard parent either way they, they they're calling them dirty blood it's not pure blood so right it's it's super offensive exactly <laughs> so immediately you're like well fuck this guy <laughs> yeah and even harry's like that like he very quickly doesn't like talking to this kid so yeah well is he like mentions his dad a bunch and how he's gonna be in slytherin house because that's where everybody was in right and yeah and then from there we go and get his wand right he yeah he goes to Ollivander's and gets his wand, which there's there's a lot of other little details in here. You know he has to go around and buy all of his school supplies, um, but they kind of gloss over that stuff pretty quick too because the his wand and like the meeting with Draco are kind of the important parts in this. Mm -hmm. um, and so Ollivander kind of drops some more knowledge on Harry because Ollivander basically. It sounds like he's like one of the only uh, wand makers in this world. Well, I got to thinking about it, and it's like a wizard only needs to buy a wand once, right? So why would there be that many wand makers? That's true. I mean, you would think they only need to buy them once, but yes. Uh, which, but also, apparently, they all buy them from him. So It's weird to me that like the wand picks the wizard, but Ron uses is an old wand. Yeah, he uses like a hand-me-down wand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I agree. There are a couple little, you know, you know, uh, details that are overlooked here, but I anyway, think they're pretty well, minor. He, they're kind of minor for how big the story is, in my opinion. True, it is spans seven books. Right. So um, while he's at Ollivander's, they go through like a bunch of wands. They can't find one. And then he's like, hmm. And then he gives him his phoenix feather wand, and it like immediately works. And he tells him that the scar that he got on his forehead. This is like basically the wand's brother, right? And he Phoenix talks about gave, who, what happened. Yeah, because the phoenix only gave two feathers, and the wand that did that to him is the other feather, and the wand that Harry has is the other. It's like the other feather. The only, only two from that phoenix, which right. I guess is the phoenix. I think that that uh, freaking Dumbledore has forks. Yeah, forks. Um. We also forgot to mention, too, that uh, Harry met Professor Quirrell when they were going oh, yeah. to Diagon Alley. So just a professor of the dark arts from the school. But this is a character you're going to kind of need to remember, basically, throughout the story. Yeah, true. Very true. Um, and then, let's see. I'm trying to remember exactly what kind of goes on next. Doesn't Hagrid buy him his birthday present? Yeah, so Hagrid ends up buying Harry his owl for school because the kids are allowed to bring it's like a, an owl, a rat, a toad, or a cat, which is really bizarre. Yeah, um, the cat is weird. To me. Right, and apparently owls are the most useful because you know they can deliver your mail and pick up your mail and stuff, so I don't know why anybody brings anything other than that. But yeah. Isn't Hermione the only one with a cat? I think so, yeah. At least the only one we're told of. Yeah. And that's not even for a while, right? Yeah, like, you don't hear about Crookshanks up. until like the third book, I think. Uh, exactly, yeah. Um, and let's see. <clears throat> Help me out here. I'm, try I'm trying not to skip too many details, but I also don't want to go too detailed. <laughs> I think what happens after that, Hagrid takes Harry home. That's right, because he has to go back to the, the Dursleys, right? Yeah, to stay the, until term starts. And the Dursleys pretty much leave him alone. And then he has to ask Vernon. He's like, can you take me to, to the station, train. please? Yep. Yeah. I, yep. I have to leave from platform nine and three quarters. And he's like, from what platform? Right. He's like, from nine and three quarters? He's like, that doesn't exist. You're an idiot. Good luck. <laughs> but... Vernon agrees to take him there and just drops yeah, him off. He and he's like, whatever, man. You, <laughs> well, the only reason he luck. agrees to take him, though, is because it's close to the hospital where they're taking Dudley to get his tail removed. To get his tail removed. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, 
So they basically leave him though at the train station and you know, and he's got all his stuff to go to Hogwarts, but he has no idea how to freaking get to this platform nine and three quarters. He asks a guy and the guy gets mad at him because he thinks the the Harry's pulling a joke on him basically. Um, but he ends up hearing a lady talking about muggles. So that's the only way he knows that they are wizards. Mm -hmm. So he watches, he tries to watch as freaking, uh, the first kid goes like running at the wall and then a bunch of people walk in front of him and he doesn't see what happens, but the kid is gone Mm -hmm. after he runs at the wall. So Harry finally goes over there and he's like, asks for some help. And then we get the twins Basically, they end up going through this invisible barrier between the muggle platform and the wizarding platform. And you just basically have to run through an actual wall to to get there. Mm -hmm. It's freaking great. And so this is where we're introduced to the Weasley family. This is where Harry Mm -hmm. meets the the redheaded Weasley family. And they are there with their mother, Molly. And she is the one who's explaining to him how this works. And yeah, this is where he ones. also meets uh, Ron. And Ron is also going to be a, another big character in this story. Yeah, yeah, pretty much the secondary character. Right. So, yeah, he gets on the train. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that happens, a lot of, like, weird little details. So the Weasleys are great. I love how they tease Percy because he's a prefect. It's great. Yeah, and this family, like I mentioned uh, briefly, is very big. So we see uh, Percy, Fred, George ron and Ginny. we see five kids in this one part but we learn later on too that there are two more kids even that have already left hogwarts yeah and so harry gets on the train and he sits in a compartment by himself and then ron shows up and he's like hey can i sit with you uh oh and i guess we forgot to mention too that like all some of the kids are kind of gawking at harry because they recognize him yeah, yeah, because some people recognize who he is based on his the scar on his forehead mm-hmm. is pretty much the reason most people can recognize him. Yeah, and he because he's a huge celebrity. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so basically, too, we find out while he's riding with Ron, you know, Ron, because Ron's family is like a pure wizarding family. And Harry knows nothing about wizarding stuff. They both find each other very interesting. So they get along pretty well right off the bat. And they have a lot of, they talk a lot back and forth about each other's kind of world. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's actually one of the more like times that Harry is kind of like, he's nervous because he doesn't know anything, but he's also comfortable because like Ron doesn't know anything about muggles and Harry, right. That's all Harry's grown up with. So they have like a very easy conversation from the beginning, which kind of starts their little friendship off here, which is kind of cool. True. Um, and then we meet Hermione because Hermione like barges into their compartment. Cause she's helping Neville look for his toad, right? Look, yep. Yep. She's helping Neville look for his toad. Yeah. And what, how does it describe her? She's like super bossy. something. I can't remember what it says. Like a, she has like a super bossy, like something i can't remember what it says but i feel like it's pretty spot on they don't they immediately don't like hermione either yeah they don't like hermione right off the bat and actually it's going to be a little while before they accept her Mm -hmm. into the story and it's every time i listen to this it's always like oh yeah i forgot that hermione's really not in like the first two thirds yeah yeah um they also too we kind of forget to mention like we mentioned voldemort's name but in this world nobody else says voldemort because he was basically like this world's Hitler, except if Hitler had pretty much taken over the world. So <laughs> yeah, and if if Hitler had like himself was the power exactly instead of the people behind him exactly. Yeah. Um, and so nobody likes to say his name. Everybody's basically scared to even speak this dude's name. So they'll say you know who a lot. Mm-hmm. So we should keep that in mind as well as we go. Um. We get a little bit of background too on Ron's family that they are extremely poor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, classic poor people having a lot of kids. You know, great, great story writing here, I guess. See, I I thought they were <laughs> poor because they had so many kids. That's probably exactly why. But then, why would you keep having more kids? 
I don't know. They, they're <laughs> fine, I guess. I like the Weasleys. Oh, no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I love the Weasleys. That's not what I'm saying. Um, so then uh, Harry and Ron, basically, this is kind of where their friendship really gets going, you know, is on this train ride. Um, but before we know it, you know, oh, that's right. Malfoy shows up again to come yeah, in. why? Freaking, because he's a douche. Like, <laughs> she does no, a good he, job. He shows up because he's like, I heard Potter was on the train. Yeah. That's right. Like, yeah, it's me, douchebag. We've actually already met. Yeah, and he shows up with his his boys, freaking crab yeah, and crab Goyle. and Goyle. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> Malfoy's freaking right and left hand cronies. Yeah, which it's pretty good. And we find out really quickly though that Malfoy, one, they don't like people with dirty blood, and they don't like freaking poor wizards either. Yeah, like poor He's just an elite piece of shit. Exactly, um, because. Ron's family, the Weasleys, are also pretty like, like accepting of Muggles or Muggle-born people. But yeah, yeah Malfoy, and we'll, they're just we'll like learn more about that too because there's kind of a reason, right? But yeah, Malfoy, the elitist, is a great way to put it. Yeah, a piece of shit. Yeah. <clears throat> so then they end up arriving uh, at the station that is close to Hogwarts, but their trip is not quite over yet because Hagrid is there. And he's calling all the first years over to him because the first years to get to the castle have to cross the lake in these self-propelled boats. Yeah, which I'm not sure why. I'm not really sure why either, other than... It's cool? I guess it's cool, and it gives... I kind of thought maybe it gives the other teachers and stuff time to set up the ceremony before they arrive, you know? Okay, I guess, because they all have to be sorted. Exactly. So I thought maybe that's, it kind of gave a little bit more time. I, yeah, I don't really know. I mean, it's just kind of cool. The boats all, you know, roll no, themselves I, over. I'm not saying it's nuts. <laughs> I don't understand it. Um, so they end up arriving at the school, and now we get to the, <sighs> the school is this gigantic castle, before I forget to mention, on like an island, basically. Um, well, I guess it's not on an island. It just seems like it There's is just a because big they lake, right? right? It's a There's huge like a lake, lake surrounding and like a yeah. forest on the on the other side. Right, that's right. Um, but basically, we meet Professor McGonagall again, and she says before they can do anything, they have to be sorted into their houses. And this was the thing we heard about in the beginning, where they talked about the different houses that are there: Slytherin and Gryffindor, and those things. Well, no, Slytherin, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff. Right. We should mention them all. We should mention them all. We should also mention it's weird that on the crest, he mentions there's a lion, a snake, a badger, and an eagle. It's a raven, I thought. He, he does says say eagle. He says eagle. Trust me, I caught raven, it this time. It's it should be a raven. I mean, raven claw. I, like <laughs> I thought. I thought their symbol is a raven. Later, I'm pretty sure it is. That's why. That's, that's the only crazy. reason I mentioned it. <laughs> this book is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um, so we go through a couple people getting sorted and the way you get sorted is they put this hat on your head and then it shouts out what house you're supposed to be in right and the hat sings before they get started too sings oh, i a song. forgot about the singing dude mm -hmm. <laughs> Good thing which is great that. it is um, great. and it's basically it's just like a wizard hat but it has like a, a spot that's torn for its mouth that, and it talks mm -hmm. um and then yeah apparently by putting it on your head it can like see your mind and it judges you based on how your mind is yeah and that's and what get, determines what house get sorted and we see ron gets sorted into gryffindor and hermione gets sorted into gryffindor and then it, it gets onto harry and when it's on harry you can actually hear the hat like what the hat is thinking and the hat's like "Ooh, you might do pretty good in slytherin and he's like anywhere but slytherin i do not yeah. want to be with malfoy please 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 Anywhere but Slytherin, and it's like, all right, I guess you'd do pretty good in Slytherin, Gryffindor. Right. So Harry ends up in Gryffindor, which it's very funny though. We've it's not funny, but we catch word of this a few times. So Ollivander kind of mentioned this, and we get a little bit of it later that like, you know, even the Sorting Hat says Slytherin could help you be great, mm -hmm. and Ollivander had said that even though you know who was a terrible person. 
he did great things like in scale yeah. wise it's just i thought that was an interesting detail yeah so then uh dumbledore gives a little speech uh we find out he's pretty he's kind of funny and <laughs> he's, pretty laid back. he says i'll say a few words then he just says a bunch of random words and sits right. down which is hilarious yeah. and then uh and then uh, all the food shows up on the, all their tables, and uh, which is like a ton of food, and it all just appears, which is great. Um, we meet the ghosts really quickly. Um, oh yeah, that's a good the, point. Nearly the ghosts show up to the feast. Yeah, we and meet. Each near... house has a ghost that's associated with them. Right. Even though I think there's more ghosts than just there like are. four, but yeah, there's like a ghost that's associated with each house, and nearly headless Nick is associated with the Gryffindor house. Mm -hmm. And he's nearly headless because there's a little bit of skin holding his head on, which is great. <laughs> it was a botched beheading. Right. Um. And so then Dumbledore also mentions a couple things after the uh, feast and he says like that the third floor corridor is off bounds basically to everyone to everyone who values their lives is what he right. says yeah 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 something to that effect who doesn't want to die a most painful death basically yeah um they're also not allowed to go into the forest and there's a couple other things that he mentions um that obviously harry's like i don't know what any of this stuff is you know he mentions quidditch N harry has no idea what quidditch is um so then they all end up they leave and uh Percy since he is a prefect is supposed to take the Gryffindors up to their dormitories the new first year Gryffindors um they meet Peeves the pol the school poltergeist yeah the the school dickhead poltergeist exactly yeah he's always just freaking you know breaking stuff and ruining people's nights and stuff mm -hmm. And to get into the Gryffindor common room, they have to go through the fat lady who is like a portrait. So you have to know the password to get That's in. That's right. Yeah. I don't, I don't, the password is always changing. I don't remember what it is. I only ever remember the first one in the book, but yeah. <laughs> um, and we, so that's kind of the theme though, is that like all four um, uh, houses they don't necessarily know where each other's uh, like dormitories or their common rooms or any of that stuff is. Yeah, that's true. Which is kind of an interesting detail that does come up later in the series. So, Do we ever learn where Hufflepuffs is at any point in the books? I don't remember, to be honest. Because I know you go to Ravenclaw and Slytherins. But yeah. I don't know if you go to Hufflepuffs. I don't know if you ever do either. I cannot remember. Um. So we is this where we get a little bit of a time skip again too after they've been there for just a little while. Uh, I mean, he talks about his day to day, but it's not important. And then, like, the next most important thing is like the broom practice. Yeah, because they kind of go through. We get a couple little kind of looks in each of the classes. We get a little bit of a. So with Snape, the potions master, we find oh, out that yeah. like we we get this real like Snape thinks Harry's a piece of shit basically. And he treats him like a piece it. of shit. So that's kind of an important detail. Um, and he also, even though everybody like knows who Harry is, he feels super inadequate because he doesn't have a friggin' clue what he's doing. Like, yeah, he's famous and he's like the worst wizard ever right now. <laughs> mm hmm. Well, maybe not Neville's the worst wizard, wizard ever, but yes. Well, yeah, maybe, but... <laughs> um, what do you mean, maybe? Well, you but, know... That first potions class, he, like, fucking sets himself on fire. Yeah, well, that happens quite a bit, I think. No, doesn't he melt the other kid's cauldron? <laughs> yeah, that's right, he <laughs> melts his cauldron into the desk. Um, so then we go, we get the first, uh, Quidditch practice or the, the broom practice basically. Yeah. With Madam Hooch. Yeah. With Madam Hooch. And so what this, it sort of talks about because first years are not allowed to own brooms at the school, but they have like little practice for the first years so that they can get used to the skills and stuff and understand what it's all about. Um, 
But while they're there, you know, freaking Neville screws up and he takes off on his broom and he ends up freaking hurting himself. So Madam Hooch has to leave. And Draco provokes Harry by taking Neville's freaking remember all a little yeah. a ball. And he uh, he flies up in the air with it and they talk some shit to each other. And then uh, Draco throws the ball. And Harry takes off after it because out of everything that Harry has experienced so far, flying has come extremely naturally to yeah. him. So he takes off after this freaking ball and he catches it in midair. Well, uh, McGonagall, Professor McGonagall sees this and she comes down there and she pulls Harry away. And Harry's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm screwed. Because Madam Hooch told him if they were flying around yeah, and get God. caught, they're in trouble. So Professor McGonagall takes him to meet Wood. And I love that. He's like, what is – Yeah, <laughs> she is goes... Wood some kind of paddle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right because she goes to uh, Professor Quirrell and she's like, can I borrow Wood? And he's like, oh, my God, what is Wood? Yeah, is that some sort of beating stick? <laughs> yeah. But it turns out to be a person. Yeah, Wood is like a sixth year or something. but he's, he's the fifth year. Is that what he is? But he's the captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Yeah. And McGonagall is like, I found you a new seeker. And Harry's like, uh, still has no idea really what any of this means. But right. basically he all he knows is he's not in trouble. So <laughs> Yeah. Now he's uh, on the team and he's like the youngest player to join the Quidditch team in a century. Yeah, because he's a first year, which is extremely rare, yeah, for first year mm -hmm. to be good enough to be on the team. And then, like, we would kind of teach him the ins and outs of Quidditch and, like, what Harry's job is, which I'll spare you the details of Quidditch. It's basically like basketball on broomsticks. Yeah, or soccer or any yeah. – any, Yeah, any, any, any net-related sport. Yeah, any ball and hoop and or square you get the ball yeah. into. So, But what Harry's job is, his job is to catch this thing called the golden snitch, which is like a little tiny gold ball with wings that flies around the Quidditch pitch. And when the seeker catches it, the game is over, and right. they get 150 points for catching the snitch. Right. Um. So yeah, Harry. Finally, though, he's kind of found something he's good at. Like this is the first thing that's really excited him because it's the only thing he really understands in this world so far is flying on a broom. Um. So then we end up around the. Halloween mark, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, basically they're all having uh, dinner and Quirrell comes running into the well, main hall. Well, before that, though, we got to mention that they freaking Ron, like Hermione had said something to Ron and Harry that they shouldn't, they like need to focus more or something like that. And he was basically like, you suck and no one likes you. Oh, that's right. And yeah. So he was a dick to her. That's right. Yeah. That is important is the only reason I mention it, but go ahead. It is because it's important to what's about to happen. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because up to this point, you know, like it's just basically been Ron and Harry up to this point. Uh, Hermione is not part of their trio yet um, until Halloween when they're all having uh, dinner in the Great Hall and freaking Coral comes running in and says that there's a freaking uh, troll, troll in the in dungeon. dungeon. Yeah. You thought you might want to know and he passes out. <laughs> yeah um that's right too and before so i don't forget to mention that harry gets his broom to given to oh yeah in the mail he yeah. gets it in the mail and malfoy's like what's that and he's like oh it's nothing and then he he opens it malfoy takes it from him and opens it and he's like he's like professor flitwick freaking harry got a broom that's not allowed and he's like oh yeah mcgonagall told me about that You're yeah gonna... she told me about the circumstances yeah, yeah. And, and malfoy's like god damn it yeah <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. That <laughs> is fantastic. Malfoy sucks. Um. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, this freaking troll breaks into the school, and uh, Ron and Harry, even though they were supposed to just go back to like their common room, they realize that Hermione doesn't know what's going on because she right. hasn't been like nobody's seen her like all day, basically. Um, so they see this troll, they leave the group, they see this giant freaking troll go into a bathroom and they're like, 
we got a plan. We'll just go lock this thing in the bathroom. <laughs> so, so they lock it in the bathroom and they immediately start hearing screams from inside the bathroom. Because yeah, Hermione is in there. Right, because Hermione is in there with the troll. And this troll is trying to kill her. Yeah. It's freaking smashing this place up. And uh, they end up having a tussle with this freaking troll. Ron finally learns how to do his levitation spell. <laughs> right, which is, I think, where the little fight with Hermione and Ron came from, is that they were partners in Flitwick's class trying to do that spell. That's when she's like, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Right, she she just keeps correcting him, and he still yeah. thinks she's wrong, and she does it, she does it perfectly every yeah. time. Because Hermione is like, basically she's like the best student at the school right now. Yeah. Like, even though she's muggle-born, she's the best freaking student in the school. Mm -hmm. She's a real tryhard. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> but, so um, Ron is actually able to do the spell on the troll's club lifts it up over his head and knocks it out right knocks the troll unconscious and from this point on the three of them are basically inseparable because they just saved her life and when the teachers come in to ask what's happening she covers for them by saying she tried to take the troll on herself, and she would have been killed if Ron and Harry hadn't shown up. And I, I guess we skipped a bit, too, because after the broom thing, Malfoy challenges Harry to a duel. Oh, shit, that's right. And so when Harry's going to the go, – him and Ron are going to the duel, Hermione tries to stop them, but she ends up going with them. And they run into Neville, too, because he's just an idiot and forgot the password, so he couldn't get back into that's right. the, the common room. And when they go there, Malfoy didn't actually – he doesn't show up. He tricked them, and he just let – oh, my God. What is his name? Who? The caretaker. Oh. oh, Filch. Filch, yeah. He just told Filch that they were going to be there, try to get them in trouble. They run away, and they end up in that corridor they weren't supposed to go to, and they see a big three-headed dog. And luckily, it doesn't do anything to them, but they, they see that it's standing on top of a trap door. Right. Yeah, and so – we're kind of left with that little bit of a cliffhanger, but at the, the, after the whole Halloween thing though, uh, he sees that, um, is this when he sees that freaking Snape has been hurt is right after the Halloween mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So through this whole thing too, have they gotten word already about what they think it is? Like why? No, not yet. They're like on the trail. Okay, yeah. So and this is where the, the they bigger kind of plot comes Hagrid in. about it, and he accidentally mentions Nicholas Flamel. That's right, and that's what starts them on the kind of the main plot of the whole the whole book. Um, and then I think the next thing that happens is it's Harry's first Quidditch match, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and so at Harry's first Quidditch match, though, basically, you know. We get kind of a lot of snapshots about like what's kind of going on during the Quidditch match. Uh, but at one point, Harry's freaking broom tries to like knock him off, like which is weird because he describes when he's first on this new Nimbus 2000 that it's like amazing. It's it's responsive. It's just super comfortable to him. Um, but at one point, the broom basically like stops and tries to knock him off of it, and it's like trying to mm -hmm. shake him loose in midair, and and, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and I can't remember who it is. Is it Hermione who notices that Snape looks like he's doing something? Yeah, it's, it's doing Hermione something? who notices that Snape's like, it looks like he's casting an incantation. And so she goes up to him with the blue fire that she had made. She lights him on fire, <laughs> basically. Yeah, she lights, she, yeah, <laughs> to she stop lights him. his robes on fire. I yeah. do, I like this detail, though, that she has the blue fire. It's like in a jar. And she, mm -hmm. like, dumps it out on his robe and then she picks most of it back up in the jar but it's enough to mm -hmm. catch his robes on fire <laughs> mm -hmm. which is freaking cool. sweet um so she's convinced though because she says that you know he wasn't breaking his eye contact he was definitely muttering a curse he was cursing your broom basically um and uh this I cannot remember if it's before or after that though that they they noticed that Snape had hurt his leg. I think it's before the Quidditch. It's match. before because freaking Harry goes to get the book back 
uh like the quidditch rules or whatever because he took it from him that's right and he goes to get it back and snape is his legs all like bandaged up and he sees it on accident like the night the day before the quidditch match yeah and he's talking to filch snape is talking to filch and says something about how are you supposed to keep an eye on all three all heads at once yeah. or something like that yeah so this so is where he's talking about fluffy right so this is where the kids start putting together this more intricate story about what's happening now well, they know dude, you, you forgot to mention that harry catches the snitch in his mouth that's true yeah yeah he freaking dives for the snitch and catches it in his mouth to win his first quidditch match like, yeah because harry's actually a total g when it comes to being a quidditch player yeah it's a it's one of the few things he's a g at actually in the whole story to be honest well, I, I think he's actually <laughs> good at most things i think he's a pretty decent wizard at least sort later of. on. Yeah, I think it's much later on though. Um, what makes you think he's bad? I don't understand. I just, I just find it funny because, uh, and I'm gonna bring up one of the movies, but in the first movie, <laughs> there's a part where Hermione says, "You're a great wizard, Harry." <laughs> this guy who's talking about the movie, he's like, he literally has cast like two spells, and that's it, and he botched both of them in the whole time. So that's why it makes me laugh. I, I don't get the takeaway that he's a bad wizard if from the book. Any right? Way. Yeah, there's more. There's much more details about it in the book that he actually isn't. You know, too bad. He passes his all his tests and stuff, so he can't be that bad with good marks. So I take that as like getting basically full points. Right. Um. Yeah, but you're right. This is when they start to put together what the, like what Fluffy is guarding. They, well, because don't they? Harry this is realizes, when they ask Hagrid about it, right? This is when they actually talk to Hagrid about it. I think that's and, actually before the Quidditch match. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either way, though, you're right. And Hagrid mentions that the dog's name is Fluffy, and because they ask why they would keep something like that locked up in a school, basically. He's like nobody would get past Fluffy. Right. But then Harry realizes that um, one of the chocolate frog cards he had gotten with Dumbledore's name on it mentions his partner, Nicholas Flamel. Right, and that's who Hagrid had brought up too. So now they know that there's some weird – because Hagrid says that's between Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. So mm -hmm. they now they're like set on doing all this research about who Nicholas Flamel is and trying to figure out what that has to do with – the three-headed dog basically is all they have to go on. And then I think it's Christmas, pretty much, like after that. Yeah, yeah, we end up and, somewhere around Christmas time, I think. Yeah, and luckily enough for Harry, Ron is staying at the school too, but Hermione's not. And Harry gets an invisibility cloak for Christmas, and he's not sure who it was from, but it was his father's. Right. Yeah, it says something like, the note says something like, your father left this in, in my possession. Use it well. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have any name, though, on who gave it to him. So, Yeah, but I think we pretty much figured it out. Uh, so he like uh, uses the invisibility cloak to go to the library because he wants to look in the restriction section for stuff about Nicholas Flamel. And like he takes a book down and he like goes to open it and as soon as he opens it it starts screaming at like at the top of its lungs. Yeah, which is a great detail. Yeah. <laughs> and then he assumes if he slams it shut it'll stop and it actually just continues at the same pitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is when he's gonna, obviously he's gonna get in trouble, you know. And so he takes off and this is when he ends up, doesn't he end up seeing, it, is it just Filch or is it Filch and Snape? It's Filch and Snape, because Snape gets Filch, and he said somebody was in the library looking at the restricted section. Right. Yeah, and he said, you told me to notify you of any, you know, anybody doing anything suspicious. And they look for Harry, so Harry ducks into this room, and he finds uh, a mirror. Mm -hmm. And when he looks into the mirror, he sees, like, his whole family standing there with him. Right. And he's like obsessed. He like he stays at the mirror till like way too late in the morning. And then he like immediately goes back and he tells Ron, he's like, Man, you gotta come see this mirror. It's amazing. I wanna see I wanna see your whole family. It'll be great. And he brings Ron back with him under, underneath the invisibility cloak. 
and they go to the mirror and Ron looks in the mirror and he's like, I don't see my family. I see me holding the house cup and I'm head boy and I'm Quidditch captain. Yeah. Quidditch captain. And I'm basically the best at everything. Right. Um, so we end up finding out too, because doesn't Harry, Harry goes back again, right? Yeah. He goes back one more time by himself, but he's just like chilling there. Cause he's, you know, he's seeing his dead parents and well, it's, it's his dead, like whole family yeah. is behind them, but mostly he wants to see his parents. Um, and uh, Dumbledore is there when he comes back again. And, and somehow Dumbledore is invisible too. Well, Dumbledore knows this is the third time he's been there. Mm-hmm. And he says, wait, how did you know? And that's when he's like, I don't need a cloak to become invisible. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is freaking awesome. Yeah, Dumbledore. Yeah, and, and then he badass. explains the mirror of Era said basically shows your truest heart's desires when you look into it. But right. it's not a good thing to keep looking into because it's just like it's not really worth dwelling on. And then Harry asks Dumbledore, he's like, what do you see when you look in the mirror? And he's like, I see myself holding a nice pair of new socks. Yeah, because then he's like, alas, another Christmas come and gone and no one got me a pair of socks. Yeah, what does he say? <laughs> like, he's like, everybody gives me something. Books. Massive. Oh, everybody yeah. yeah, insists on giving me books. Yeah, because <laughs> you're a fucking nerd, Dumbledore. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody just assumes he's a nerd, but, you know, Dumbledore's a pretty deep dude. It. Is he? I, I want to know more about like the because isn't there a book that's about like him and Grindelwald or whatever? Uh, maybe or is that just a movie. I honestly I don't know. Yeah, I honestly I don't know. Um, so then they end up. Let's see. I think this is where Hagrid gets his dragon, right? I think so. Yeah. Well. They end well, up... no, they, they figure out who Nicholas Flamel is. Right. They do some more research, and they figure out who Nicholas Flamel is once Hermione gets back, because she's like, I took yeah, this Hermione's for some... OG. Yeah, and she's like, I took this out of the library for some light reading. It's like this huge book. And mm-hmm. she's like, uh, Nicholas Flamel, basically, he's the one who has the uh, Philosopher's Stone, right? Is that what they call it in this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Sorcerer's Stone. The, sor- it's the title oh, of the book. We're it is horrible. I know. It, but that's what it's supposed to be. Is a well, that that is what stone. it is. <laughs> yeah, that's but what exactly. it's exactly. That's exactly what it is. Like attributed to is a philosopher's stone. But in this, it's the Sorcerer's Stone, which essentially gives you immortality. Is what it does. Well, it creates something called the elixir of life that you have to continue. Like you have to drink. I think all all the time. Right. Because it turns Flamel, anything into gold. Right, which would be the Philosopher's Stone. Um, right, anything that basically can g- give power for free is a Philosopher's Stone. Right. Um, and they find out that uh, Nicholas Flamel is like, what is he, like 600? 690 or... something. Yeah, and his wife is also like 600 mm-hmm. and something years old. Um, but so they they put two and two together and like, Oh, that's what Fluffy is guarding is the mm-hmm. philosopher's or sorry, the sorcerer's stone. I'm going to keep doing that now is the sorcerer's stone. Um, and they're like, obviously Snape wants that thing because they, they put it together pretty quick. This, they think Snape wants it to take it to Voldemort, right? No, they, they think to begin with Snape just wants it to For become himself. immortal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Cause Snape's a piece of shit. <laughs> So, well, yeah. Um, they also, too, we forget to mention that the uh, the next Quidditch match, Snape is the referee. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Or does that happen after the dragon? I don't remember. No, I think it's right in here. It it's just it's only an important point later on in the story, like like towards the end of the book. Is it an important point? But we should mention that that Snape makes sure he's the uh, referee of the very next Quidditch match that Harry is part of, even though it's like Ravenclaw or something like that, or Hufflepuff and Gryffindor. <clears throat> um, and he treats Gryffindor like shit, like calls fouls on everything. Well, like, it's a super short match. Yeah. Um. So, let's see. 
think right in here is when they the dragon stuff happens though right i think i think so pretty sure yeah well anyway they they go to hagrid's like hagrid asked them to come to his house and they go there and he has like a roaring fire I, actually i think they go there to ask him questions about fluffy because Hagrid like unintentionally gives up information. That's just the kind of person he is. It's hilarious, yeah. It is kind of hilarious. He doesn't mean <laughs> to. But yeah, he like unintentionally gives up information. So they're basically just going there to try to grill him. And then Hermione like says some really nice things to him. And then he he kind of he ends up telling them all the teachers that were involved in protecting the Sorcerer's Stone. Well, and it's worth it's worth mentioning too that after that Quidditch match where Snape is the um, referee, Harry sees someone going into the forest and he follows on his broom. And he sees, this is when Snape is accusing Quirrell. So this is where it really puts Snape as the main villain and Quirrell as like a, you know, a whiny little stuttering dude. Right. Like right. it's a, it's super red herring, but it's pretty well done. <laughs> um but it's just like Quirrell keeps coming up in the story uh, quite a bit, but obviously, like I said, red herring, we're all focused on Snape as the bad guy. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah. Then right after that, I think is when they go and talk to Dumbledore or not Dumbledore, sorry, Hagrid, because of what uh, Harry heard Snape saying to Quirrell basically. Right. But then this is where we're introduced. Yeah, and this is where we're introduced to the freaking the dragon. Yeah, in orbit. (laughs) Well, actually, we're just introduced to an egg at first. Right. But then they all get a letter saying it's hatching. So that's when Mm -hmm. they all go back down to Hagrid's hut. And while they're at Hagrid's hut, though, right, they freaking, after the dragon hatches, they freaking see Draco. What's his nuts was, yeah, he was watching because he. Um, I can't remember. He like saw them going, like leaving the castle or something, going to Hagrid's hut, but he followed them down there. Right, and what something happens to Ron? I can't remember what happens to Ron. He gets bitten by the dragon, and so he, he gets has to bitten. Get Madame yeah. Pomfrey. He's in the hospital, and or in the hospital wing. And while he's in the hospital wing, <laughs> Malfoy visits him and pretends he's like wants to get a book from him just to laugh at him. Right, and yeah. he left. Well, actually, I, I guess I forgot to mention that they 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 make a plan for one of Ron's brothers to take the dragon because Hagrid can't have him, and they know that Malfoy knows about it, so they have to get rid of him because owning a dragon is illegal. Right, and so they make a plan, and they have like this note from his brother that says they'll meet them on the tallest tower at this and this time. You know, bring the dragon, but Malfoy took that book, so he. It had the note in it, so Malfoy knows about the plan. Right, Malfoy knows about it. Mm-hmm. So basically what they're going to do, though, is uh, Hermione and Harry are going to take the uh, – they're going to take the dragon under the invisibility cloak up to this tower and do the exchange. And after they do the exchange, they friggin' leave without putting the invisibility cloak back on. Yeah, which is like just seems stupid to me. I – Yeah. It wouldn't have seemed stupid if it was well, like Ron and Harry. The they leave the invisibility cloak up there too. Yeah, they they forget it on top of the tower, which, like I said, mm-hmm. would have made more sense if it was like Ron and Harry, but not with yeah. Hermione, because she mm-hmm. she is like a no nonsense. She don't break rules and none of that stuff, you know. And so, so Professor McGonagall finds them, Malfoy and Neville, because Neville was trying to warn them. That Malfoy had told somebody about their plans. Right. Because Neville's just a really good guy. So basically, they all get detention. All four of them. Well, they get detention, and they all get 50 points taken away from Gryffindor apiece. Which is like... everybody kind of hates them because they were winning the House Cup. Yeah, and they're all really pissed at Harry because, you know, Harry just got them all these points from the Mm -hmm. Quidditch match, but then he just turned around and lost them a ton of points, you know, so... right. Um, so for their detention, they have to go into the freaking forbidden woods with Hagrid at yeah. night, like after they were told they cannot go into the forbidden woods. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that for their detention, they have to go in with Hagrid and Hagrid, he knows there's a, a unicorn that's been hurt in the forest and they basically have to find this thing and help it is their mm -hmm. whole point of what they're doing. So it's Hagrid and Fang and Draco, uh, Hermione, uh, Neville, and Harry. Mm -hmm. So at first, they split up into two groups. It's Fang, Neville, and Draco, and Hagrid, Ron, and Hermione. Or excuse me, Hagrid, Harry, and Hermione. And they split up, and they're looking for this freaking unicorn they keep seeing droplets of unicorn blood which is what they're trying to fall which is like this really like silvery looking uh mm -hmm. stuff <clears throat> and uh they had like a plan like you know send up this color sparks if you find it send up this color sparks if you're in trouble and they end up seeing what is it red sparks i think it is well they actually run into the centaur first before that i can't remember his name bane Bane, that's right. They run into Bane first. Yep. You're and right. Hagrid's like, have you seen a unicorn herd? And he's like, the stars, they don't yeah. bode well. Oh, like, yeah. What? What are you talking about? Hagrid asks him a couple more times and he continues to say the same thing. And Hagrid's like, well, if you see anything, let me know. Yeah. Mars is bright tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. Mars is bright tonight. <laughs> that's okay. right. Um, but then after that, yeah, they see some red sparks because Malfoy just scared the shit out of freaking Neville. Yeah, so then they end up, they split up. They they change teams, basically. You get Draco, and you get freaking Harry and uh, Fang, and then you get Hagrid, Hermione, and Neville go their separate ways. Mm -hmm. um, and then they end up... Uh, <sighs> I'm trying to remember. Cause... Well, this is where they... Uh, I, I can't, like, they, they stumble across like a hooded man drinking on a dead unicorn and Draco just runs away. Right. But the man, like the, the figure gets up and tries to attack Harry, but he's, he's rescued by another centaur. Right. And this is, uh, this is Forenzi. Yeah. That rescues him this time. They also, they meet two unicorns because they meet Bane and Ronan in the beginning. Centaurs. You mean, what did I say? Unicorns. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, centaurs. Bane, they meet Bane and Ronan. Right. Yeah, that's first. right. When they're when they're taking care, because Ronan comes up and says the same thing. He's like, Mars is bright tonight. Yeah. That's and scary, whatever, dude. It, it, the only reason that's important is because Ferenzi rescues Harry and then brings him back. But Ronan and Ronan and Bane see Harry riding on Ferenzi's back, and they're like, "Oh, you let him sit astride you like a common mule or whatever." <laughs> <laughs> well, I get the vibe, too, that they kind of knew that something was going to happen to Harry that night, and Ferenzi interfered. Right. Like, and the that's... stars were foretold about something happening to, to Harry that night, and he kind of changed fate by right. interfering. <clears throat> yeah, because that's basically what they do, is they watch the heavens in this universe, mm -hmm. and they kind of know everything that's going to happen, basically. And Ferenzi tells um, Harry that like unicorn blood will, will keep you alive, but it's it's like a horrible life. Like it it it's not it's not like something you want to do if you are a good person, because it's like the most evil act in the world to kill a unicorn, let alone to drink its blood. Right. Exactly. So then this is where uh, basically Harry finds out that that he he thinks that was Voldemort that was drinking that blood at that point. So he's like, right. this is where he puts two and two together. And he's like, oh, Snape is trying to help Voldemort find the Sorcerer's Stone mm -hmm. to, to basically bring him back to life, essentially, and to make him immortal. Right. And so that's pretty much when they decide, right, that they are going to go get the Sorcerer's Stone before Voldemort can. Yeah, they decide they are going to be the freaking heroes, even though they're first years. They're going to be the heroes of the story. Um, oh, right. And when Harry gets back from his detention, he finds his freaking invisibility cloak back on his bed. Yeah, and it has a note that says, just in case. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they also have to, don't they have to freaking take their, they have to take their exams first, though, right? 
Yeah, they do take their exams, and there's also a little scene where they go back to Hagrid, and they ask him where he got the dragon egg, and he's like, from a bloke in the tavern, we were playing cards, he's getting yeah. drunk. And and then Harry finds out that the guy in the tavern figured out how to get past Fluffy, because Fluffy will calm down if you play him a bit of music. <laughs> yeah, because Hagrid just, in telling his stories, he accidentally tells too much. Yeah. So he's like... The guy was really interested in Fluffy, you know, because it's not every day you see a three-headed dog. And I told him it's real easy. You play him a little bit of music, and he falls straight to sleep. And right. Well, he, and then he's he like, was trying to convince the guy he could take care of a dragon. Right. Yeah, because he says after Fluffy, a dragon would be no problem. Mm-hmm. But he lets that slip, and so he also lets it slip to Harry, Ron, and Hermione. And that's, yeah, he's like, oh, I should not have told you that. <laughs> yeah. But, but now, you're right, they just take their exams. There's like a, a bunch of bits of them like studying and all that. I think it's actually like one of the last days of school. They they go to tell Dumbledore that someone's trying to get the Sorcerer's Stone, but he's not there. He had to go to the Ministry of Magic. Right, so they, they tell McGonagall, but they decide they're like, well, she's the next best thing. They tell, they tell her what's going to happen. And she's like, I have no idea how you know about this, but trust me, you know, the stone is perfectly safe, basically. So then they decide that nobody else is going to do anything about this. So it's up to them, the three of them, to friggin' put a stop to this. Yeah, so they they sneak back in and they get past Fluffy because Harry plays a flute, right, that Hagrid made him? Yeah, Hagrid made him that he got for Christmas. We forgot to mention yeah, that. Yet. Yeah. And the way they do this is like, he starts playing and Fluffy immediately like starts getting tired. So they can get to the trap door and I think I can't remember what order they go in, but basically somebody has to play and then one of them jumps down and then they pass the flute off and then mm-hmm. the next one jumps down and so forth. Um and when they jump down, they end up <laughs> cuz Ron's like, "Good thing he's like that fall was a long way. It's good thing somebody put this soft plant here to break our fall." <laughs> Mm-hmm. but they realize the plant is like constricting their freaking legs and yeah. holding on to them you know it, and Hermione's the only one who knows it's freaking devil's snare yeah which hates light yeah so, so she, she makes some light they get past that one Yeah. and the next one is like a bunch of flying keys right and they have to find like a specific there's a, there's flying keys and a bunch of brooms and they have to find like a specific key for a specific door and right. luckily harry is a seeker he almost immediately notices that one of the wings is messed up which is like i, I feel like that's how they're able to get through most of this is that most of it has already been done for them i so agree they, actually it's a lot yeah. simpler right so yeah harry finds the key they get through that one and the next one is chess right wizard chess I think so, because, yeah, because the potions one is one of the last ones. The potion one is the last one. Yeah, because that's why they end up having to split up. That's right. So then they, yeah, it's full-size freaking wizard chess, and they all have to play as, like, a A piece on the board, right? And And Ron is kind of in charge because he's the best at wizard chess. Yeah, because Ron has played a lot of wizard's chess. Um, But during this, like, at the end of this, freaking Ron ends up, he gets hurt though right well he has to the piece that he's playing he has to sacrifice himself so that he can set up harry for checkmate right exactly and then once they get past that they yeah that's when they end up going into the uh well they, they find a big old troll like all it's already knocked, knocked out yeah it's already knocked but out. it's it's like that's four right. times as big as the one that they saw before yeah yeah, and then they go to like a logic puzzle that Hermione's like, oh, this is easy as hell. And she figures it out almost immediately. That's the potions one, though, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she figures it out. So there's a bunch of different potions they have to drink. Because once they get in the room, there's like fire at the doorway in front of them and then fire at the doorway behind them that are different colors. And one of the potions will let them back through the door they came in. And one of the potions will let them go forward to the next room. And there's only a left there's only enough in the one that will get them to go forward for one person. So Harry's obviously like, it's gotta be me. Yeah. So, so Harry walks through the fire and 
in the next room, he sees Quirrell, 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 whatever the fuck I say his name. Right. <laughs> in front of the mirror of Erised. Right. Which Harry obviously thought it was going to be Snape, you know, right. this whole time. I think we all thought it was going to be Snape, right? Exactly. Like the I first said, time. red herring, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a pretty well done red herring because yeah. it was a red herring, but there was enough subtle hints that once you get to this point, you're like, oh, shit. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. But Quirrell can't seem to get the stone out of the mirror. Yeah, he and, said he uh, sees he said he sees himself in the mirror holding the stone, but he has no idea mm-hmm. how to get it, basically. And, um, and then he like he puts he he makes Harry get in front of the mirror, right? And he's like, What do you see? And Harry lies and he's like, Yeah, I see my parents or whatever. But while he's looking in the mirror, the stone like appears in Harry's pocket. Right. Um, yeah, and because we hear another voice during this, too, saying to use the boy, basically, to get the stone. And that's when Quirrell is questioning Harry on how how he's supposed to do it. And Harry, yeah, Harry tells him, he's like, oh, I see myself winning the the house cup, like, he's basically bullshits him and then you hear this other voice again saying that he's lying liar yeah and so harry harry still has no idea what's going on he's like what you know what is happening right now mm-hmm. um and then, then quarrel ties him up right yeah i think he so. he has like these freaking ropes that he can snap his fingers and they bind harry up <clears throat> Right. Um, and then Quirrell, the voice says to Quirrell, he's like, I want to talk to the boy face to face. Right. And so Quirrell takes his turban off, and like the back of his head has Voldemort's face on it. Yeah, he has like a face on both sides of his head, which is creepy as hell. And then so Quirrell goes to grab Harry, and like he grabs him, and his hand like immediately starts to like blister and burn. Yeah. And it's like super creepy. Yeah, and <laughs> like and so Harry kind of figures it out, and he like puts both of his hands on Quirrell's face. Yeah, which causes his skin to like boil and freaking yeah. blister. And and they struggle for a while, and then Harry passes out. Yeah. And then when he regains consciousness, he is in the hospital wing, and Dumbledore is just chilling next to him. Yeah, and Dumbledore basically explains everything that happened like Mm -hmm. he apologizes to harry pretty much and he explains everything that's happened in the three freaking days he's been there (laughs) passed passed out out for a while yeah um and he basically he also explains too to harry why he was able to get the stone out of the mirror where quarrel couldn't and right Basically, the the stone was hidden in the mirror by Dumbledore, and he used the mirror, and he said, the only way you could have retrieved it is if you wanted to get the stone, but not use it for any, you know, yeah, you for had any no reason. intentions of actually using it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's the only way so, to get it out. Um, and he also explains to Harry why he was he's like toxic to Voldemort basically like Voldemort can't touch him. Right. Which I can't remember the reasoning now that I'm thinking about it. I, I don't remember the reasoning in this first book either. We, we learn more about it later in the series. Mm-hmm. I believe he says it's because of his mother's love, right? Yeah. Kind that's of. what pro- kind of, yeah, that's what protects him essentially. Um, uh, Dumbledore also tells him that the uh, the Sorcerer's Stone was to be destroyed mm-hmm. and that Nicholas Flamel, they had enough serum or life potion or whatever you want to call it left to uh, put their affairs in order and then they would die basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that So that's right because Dumbledore explains to harry that his mother died saving him right. and it was his mother's love that saved him initially so 
that's the reason why Voldemort, you know, because Voldemort can't really, we learn more about this later, but he can't really even understand or fathom this concept. Love, yeah, because yeah. he's such a piece of shit. Right. Well, it has to do with, never mind, I guess it's, never mind. I'm yeah, we were not like books way later. Exactly. Just want to talk yeah, about Harry Potter stuff right now. I'm trying, yeah, I'm having a hard time too, not getting into like, stuff later down the line and um, i know we've already dropped some stuff if somebody's like oh i've never listened to harry potter before they're like who the fuck is who, yeah. dumbledore has a phoenix right <laughs> yeah <laughs> um we also learned too that snape kind of hates harry because uh he hated his harry's dad yeah and um, harry's dad had saved snape's life right so Snape was actually trying to help Harry when he was on like the Quidditch pitch when his broom was going crazy because Quirrell was trying to kill Harry. Yeah, and Quirrell is the one we – yeah, Quirrell is the one who kind of admits to that, that he's yeah, like – I right. would have – about that. Yeah, he's like, I would have done it too if Snape hadn't been muttering his counter curse. Yeah. Um, and when Hermione had disturbed Snape, it, they also had ruined the concentration of Quirrell too. Exactly. Uh, we also basically too, Coral admits that like the whole time, you know, Snape was stopping him from doing things, mm -hmm. you know, even though like Harry was always just walking in at the wrong time, <laughs> basically. Well, yeah, it's like it looked bad. Yeah. Um. So then we end up what at the final feast of the year? Yeah. At the final banquet. And, yeah, and everybody's uh, all sad because the Slytherins won the House Cup again. Right. But then Dumbledore's like, JK, actually. And he has like, some last minute points to yeah, award. Yeah, he like proceeds to award everybody points. I guess we did skip the part of when they were trying to go get the Sorcerer's Stone at the beginning, Neville tried to stop them. He oh yeah, like, yeah, you guys, yeah. You guys can't do this any like you guys cannot do this. You'll I don't get know, Gryffindor I don't know, in trouble. Yeah, I don't know what you're up to, but I have to stop you. Like he's like, Ron, you told me to start standing up to people. He's like, Yeah, everybody but me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Hermione does a like a whole body lock and curse on him anyway. But that is kind of important. So Dumbledore goes through and he like awards everybody points. He he gives some to Hermione for being like super smart and able to figure out logic puzzles, gives some to Ron for being like like playing one of the best wizarding chess games ever played and he gives some to harry for just being you know harry potter and getting the sorcerer's stone i can't remember what he actually says and then he gives a couple points to neville for standing up to his friends and he gives them just enough to beat slytherin right it's like exactly mm -hmm. 10 points more than than slytherin had so yeah. gryffindor ends up winning the house cup which hasn't happened in like seven years or something like yeah. that which if i was a slytherin i would be so mad yeah because it's all stuff that like yeah nobody else even had a clue like you know yeah. what had gone down although that it is funny that dumbledore says that he's like what took place you know uh between you and Quirrell was an absolute secret. So naturally, the whole school knows about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I yeah. was going to say that too. Because it is funny. <laughs> uh, does anything else happen? They like ride home and he has to hang out with the Dursleys some more. But Well, he... the, the only thing is when he's going to go home, he's in like a better mood because... He's like the Dursleys don't know I'm not allowed to do yeah, I was gonna say that magic too. outside of school. Yeah, yeah, and but that's pretty much Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, um, yeah that that wraps up the first book. Um, and again, I mean, if it weren't apparent enough, you know, just the nostalgia of this one. Oh my yeah, gosh, yeah, it's bad. You no, know, like, hits me right in the feels. I know, and I, and I feel like it's kind of hard to not be absolutely in love with this especially like all the time that i've spent with it and well and kind of growing up with it really yeah. too um especially like for me when the movies came out i was exactly the same age as they were supposed to be in the movies yeah so that's right it, it that's where that's why a lot of this really sticks with me and kind of resonates with me is because like i had listened to all the freaking books and then all of a sudden the movie comes out and i'm like I find out, yeah, that he's like 11, and I was like, you know, right around that same age at the time, and I was like, oh, this is going to be so cool. So, yeah, it was freaking great. And I'm glad yeah. to get back to it all these years later, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, me too. 
Hmm. You got anything else you want to say about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? I don't think so. I think I'm good. I think I'm sure pe- we've probably bored people to death. And and again, don't take our Maybe. word for any of this stuff. Definitely just like if you listen to us this long, you might as well go listen to the book now. Like <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good point. Yeah, because you, you're doing yourself a disservice if you think, you know, by us giving you the freaking cliff notes on this that you get the story. Because yeah, you're plus, not getting a very good job. I mean, plus you got to do yourself a favor and just listen to Jim Dale. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah, he does a great job. For sure. So, what are we doing next time, Bo? Oh man, the next book is what is it called? I feel like the title's so generic. The beautiful thing that awaits us all. Yeah, which is another Laird Baron book. Right, which was and kind of an accident, it, but yeah. It, I feel like it was 100% an accident, and I don't, <laughs> I don't blame you at all. Right. Um, and then hopefully soon we'll be, we'll have another uh, Anime Squires episode coming out as well. Yeah, that should be pretty soon too. Yeah, and then the the next book after that we are doing Spellbound, which is the second book in the Hard Magic series. In the Grimoire Grim Noir series, but yes. Oh, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's called the Grim Noir series. Yeah, oh. it's the sequel to Hard Magic, though. Yeah. So yeah, if anybody has anything to say about any of those things that are coming up, please email us and let us know. kotpl.pod at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you guys. And with that, uh, yeah, thank you anyone and everyone for listening. We greatly appreciate it. So.